Hey folks, this is a quick tutorial about uh, camera calibration and uh, this is a scene that I've set up here which is a photograph of an empty art gallery and uh, some 3D objects that were brought in, 3D models that were brought in and lit to, uh, you know, if essentially seamlessly interact with the scene that we're going to create. Alright, so let's talk about how to do this. So uh, in order to create uh, camera calibration, we first need a camera. Uh, actually, before I say that, what we need is to know what the resolution of the image is. So this image that I was using is this empty art gallery, and uh, the dimensions are 1528 by 899. So I'm just going to set up my project settings to match. So 1528 and 899, um, and that way <clears throat> everything will definitely match the, uh, the file size. So next, bring in a camera. Make sure that you look through the camera so that little white box is checked. Uh, and the tab, uh, camera is going to get a tag. So uh, object manager, grab tags, single so ID tags, and then camera calibrator. Um, under camera calibrator, in the attributes manager, we have basic, we have image, we have calibrate. And these are sort of the steps that we're going to go through. Image, we're going to grab our empty gallery image. Whatever that may be, here we go. We'll bring this in. And next we go to calibrate. So here what we're trying to do is um, assign geometry to our scene uh, based on the X, Y, and Z. Down here in the little bottom corner you can see Z is going back into space, X is going across the plane, and Y is going up. And so we'll, we'll attempt to match that. So in order to do this, we need to go through and um, try to calibrate all of these things. So to begin, we'll add a line. And with this, you're going to get a line that has these nodes on either side. If you grab one of these nodes, what you're going to do is line it up with an area in the scene that you can, you can see. So in this case, I'm going to go to the wall or the form of the wall because it's a very clear line that's going back into our Z axis. You also notice that you get a magnification, and so you can line up really precisely where the wall meets the edge. Now, this line looks pretty good, but it doesn't have any, uh, it needs to be assigned a direction. So in order to do that, you hit the shift key, hold the shift key down, and click until you get the color that matches the direction. So in our case, Z is blue, uh, and when we match that up, uh, we're assigning that direction. Uh, so we'll go in and add another line. This one, uh, it's helpful to do things that are uh, sort of below and above the eye level. If you consider, you know, the eye level is the middle of the composition here, where the camera, you know, think about where the camera height is and where the uh, viewer was uh, using the camera in the scene. So I'm going to take this one and put it on the, where the ceiling meets the, the wall. And again, line that up. You don't need to go directly to the corners. In fact, it can be confusing if points are overlapping. So I tend to just stick to the edges of those walls. Hit shift, click again. So that turns blue. Already we're getting this solved along the Z axis. I'm going to add one more Z because I want to make sure that I have this plane here designated so that, that the, um, our camera understands where our scene actually begins and ends. And we really want the floor to be our main setting for some objects in here. So again, I'm going to take another uh, line. I'm going to line this up. I don't know. I'm going to sign this. Z axis. Now this is solved with green. Um, so that looks pretty good. Um, the next thing I want to do then is uh, add some elements of X. So I'm going to add, add a line in. This back wall is pretty clear where it meets the floor, so I'm just going to bring a line in here and uh, line this up along that edge. Looks pretty good. Shift, click it, make it red so it's the X axis add an additional line. Try to avoid, you know, there's lights that are overlapping here, so I'm just going to see an area that's really clear that I can understand and uh, line this up in the corner here. Um, assign this our uh, X. So in this case now we have a whole bunch of things that are solved. Um, X vanishing point has been solved. Y vanishing point has been solved indirectly because it, it sort of understands, you know, what the Z and the X are doing, and so it sort of is calculating what the what the Y would be. The um, the Z vanishing point is solved. Camera focal length is solved. 
camera orientation, which is this right here to solve. The last thing is the camera position. And this can be a little bit confusing, but essentially in order to, to do camera position, we want to add a pin. And so when you add a pin, automatically it's going to solve that um, assumed distance there. Um, but what is helpful to do is to actually place this along one of the, the points that you're working with, kind of one of these lines. So I'm just going to snap it over here um, to the edge of this line because that's sort of in you know in the middle of our scene and this is going to be the orientation where um, where the lines get brought in so <clears throat> so this will help to sort of assign where our objects are going to land so we can move them around accordingly all right so once this is all solved we click create camera mapping tag we click create background object and this gives us um, the background that's going to be composited in our scene and then it also assigns the camera a tag um, and a material to, to look like. So um, uh, now we can add some geometry to our scene. One thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to camera before I start this and I'm going to add another tag which is a, a Cinema 4D tag and a protection tag and that's just going to make sure that our camera doesn't move. Um, notice that the, um, the axis is brought in so our zero point is actually back where we put that pin. We could have put it in the middle of the room here, but I think that lining it up along one of those edges is helpful. All right, so now our camera can't move, which is good, because if you bump the camera, if you move it around, uh, it's going to mess up everything. All right, so let's add some geometry to our scene. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to grab the plane, I'm going to bring it in. Notice again, it brings it at zero. Um, the thing to remember here is you don't want to uh, move up and down on the y-axis. You want to sort of just move, uh, you know, scale your object and move it back and forth along the x and the z. So I'm going to take the width and scale this down a little bit. I'm going to move it over. What I'm going to do is just using the scale and position of our, um, you can always go out of the camera too if you need to. So go out of the camera, this kind of helps us. Get it closer to the camera, go back into the camera, and then you can see what we're dealing with here. So I'm just going to line this up, and um, based on the width, you can see, let me go back out of my camera again, and move this plane closer to the camera view there. See, here's our camera. So go back in. <clears throat> All right, that's better. Maybe a little bit too far, but that's okay. Let's go back. <laughs> uh, this, you know, once you get things lined up, then it, then it, uh, I don't want to say it's easy, but it's it's much more intuitive. Um, let's actually go there. Looks better. It's probably with like around negative 100 that we're looking for. That looks pretty good. So I'm just going to drag this to go. So I'm going to try to meet that back wall back there. And then here I'm going to scale this so that it matches along those edges of the wall. And based on moving it along the X and scaling it down, we should be able to get it to match up pretty good. Okay, so now I have this lined up. If I render this out, you know, you know it's just a black square in our scene, which we don't want. We want this to match the, um, the, the room, the texture of the room. So our background image has this material on it, which is the first one we brought in. But if you click it here, you can see it's highlighted down below. I'm going to take this material, drag it onto the plane. Um, if I render this out, you can see that it um, still doesn't match up too well because it's in, in that sort of shadow. So I want to do, um, for this, I want to make sure that I use frontal mapping. okay? And then also for the plane, I need to make sure that I have a tag on it, which is a compositing tag. So Cinema 4D tag, compositing tag, when that's in place, you want to make sure you have compositing background checked. Right? And this should give us our seamless sort of scene. So it's there, but we don't see it because it has frontal projection and we're compositing it with this background image that we're utilizing. All right. So now we can set up the rest of our... So uh, here's, here's one way to illustrate this. If I bring in a sphere, it's going to be ginormous. Negative 15. Let's make it at... Uh, negative 100, so it's in our scene file. I'm going to actually make it uh, 5 instead. That's pretty good. I'm going to bring it up on the Y, 5. And now it's sitting directly on the floor. 
in the middle of our scene. I'm actually going to bring it 120 and Z maybe. 140. Okay, that's pretty good. So here it is. It's in the middle of our floor. And I'm just going to create a new material. And uh, give it some uh, reflection. So I like this GGX reflection. I'm just going to keep it like that. And I'm going to bring it here. So if we render this out now, what you can see is that the sphere is reflecting the floor, but the, the rest of it is just emptiness. So the camera's um, reading this background image, but the sphere is not reflecting anything because there's no geometry left in the scene. So in order for us to get this to work, we need to add more geometry. Because this plane is already already has our image, our material, and our tag on it, we can just simply copy and paste it. So I'm going to copy it, Command C, Command V, and then uh, I'm going to go down to the Attributes Manager and change the orientation to plus X. So now it's vertical in our scene, and we can just move it over to match our wall. So I want to make sure it crosses over our plane just a little bit and goes up to that corner at where the ceiling is. All right? Take this, copy it, paste it again, drag it over for our left wall, again overlapping that edge just a little bit, and bring it up into the scene so it matches. And then finally go back to that floor plane, copy this, paste it, and bring it up into our scene so it matches the ceiling and should overlap those walls just a little bit. So now we render this out, we can see that we have a reflection of the ceiling, the floor, the walls, and the scene pretty well. There's this little black edge along the back, which is actually the background. Uh, and so it's getting a little bit of the back. So for that, what we can do is just paste in another one, change this orientation to plus Z. And then uh, if we zoom out of our camera, I'm going to drag this back here so that it matches our scene a little bit better. There we go. So now we should that really have that little black edge is gone. So what we need next is some light in the scene. And because this um, lighting in here is this fluorescent lit sort of uh, rectangular perimeter lighting, I'm going to choose a light that sort of matches that, which is an area light. Now when we bring an area light in, it's going to project along the, um, the Z axis. All right, and so I want to change this so it goes down. So I'm just going to rotate this. I'm going to rotate it down 90 degrees, which is actually negative 90 for us. So I'm just going to make this negative 90. And then I'm going to orient this in the middle of our space. Oops, there we go. A little bit better. And let's just go back to the scene. Actually, if we go to the top view, we can get a clear idea as to what this is. So, um, Here's our object right here. I'm going to center it on our, on our object, and then I'm going to narrow this down so it's within the confines of our floor and our ceiling. And then I'm going to make this a little bit longer so it gets closer to the camera. So that should be pretty good. And then the last thing is I'm going to bring it up. So it has to be slightly below the ceiling. That's above the ceiling, it should be a little bit below the ceiling. And uh, this should give us a decent lighting. Um, as we see, we can make this a little bit longer yet. There we go. So let's render this out and see. All right, not so bad. We forgot to add shadows. So let's go to click on the light, attributes manager, shadow, and choose an area light. Let's see how this looks. All right, not too bad. If you find that when you render this out, there are little lines showing up, that means that your planes are not crossing, so it's not watertight, if you will. And, uh, and so you can fix that by moving your planes around to fit the scene. So in this case, you know, any, any object that you bring in um, should be able to interact with your scene fairly well. Um, and uh, let's just add a little something else here. Bring this object in. So even objects that are against the wall, you should be able to interact with your space. So let's render that out and see. You should have a nice little, there you go, nice little shadow on the wall there. All right, well, that's it for camera calibration for now.